Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Vallabh Chavla and today we will be doing a case study on impacted tooth. Impacted tooth which is hiding behind the second, pre uh, second molar. Okay, so basically patient was referred for a CBCT scan where the clinician had observed an impacted that, or you can say an accessory tooth just palatal to the second pre uh, molar. Okay, so this is the case of uh, sectional CBCT where you can just see this thing or this is the uh, buccal aspect and this is the lingual or the palatal aspect. Okay, so we'll just cut this thing. We'll just cut the mandibular teeth as that's not our concern. So the mandibular teeth have been cut. Okay, so this section is the axial section, this section is the sagittal section and this section is the coronal section. Okay, we'll just adjust the brightness and the contrast of the same and sh sharpen the image a bit. Okay, so we've added some sharpness filters also and adjust the brightness and contrast as well. And if you want, you can increase or decrease the thickness as well for a better view. Okay, we'll take it in 0.5 mm thickness. So just that when we decrease the thickness, the image noise increases. You can see granular image. So it's always ideal to do it in 1 mm or 2 mm thickness. 1 mm thickness is the best. But in this case, we'll just make it in 0.5 mm. Uh, we'll just uh, see the thing in along the long axis of the tooth. So this is the second molar. This is the first molar. And... This is the buckle aspect. Now just have a close observation on the panoramic image. Okay, so this is the panoramic image. Our area of concern is the second quadrant. That is 2627 region. Okay, so when you see at the panoramic image, you can easily make out there is no impacted tooth. Like this is your canine, this is your premolar, first premolar, second premolar, first molar, and the second molar. Third molar is not visible. Hence, in such cases, it is always recommended to use a 3D scan, 3D modality that is CBCT. Uh, now, so as we've seen the panoramic view, we took the CBCT of this specific region, the second quadrant. So just have a close uh, look at the tooth of concern. You can just get the lines along the tooth of concern and arrange it along the long axis of the tooth. Okay, so basically this is nothing but your third molar, which is palatally placed and it is vertically impacted, vertically erupted, palatally placed, grossly decayed and the root apex is in contact with the sinus flow. This is the sinus flow. Okay, so you can check out the sinus flow and sinus pneumatization is also evident. You can check the same thing by just moving it from buccal to palatal. This is the buccal aspect, buccal roots of 2-6, mesobuccal and the distobuccal root. Get it inside palatally. This is the palatal root. And this is the start of your uh, 2-8 basically. Or you can say impacted supernumerary teeth, but uh, supernumerary tooth. But uh, I feel this looks more like a third molar, which is palatally placed and is away from its original position in the second molar region. Okay, so this tooth is basically grossly decayed. You can just see it in the axial section also. You can make it out. It is palatally placed. It is in contact with the sinus floor okay if you want to have a detailed view of it you can just mark the spline markings there's a spline marking and you can study it in 1mm thick, uh, 1mm interval lines okay so this is 1, 1mm interval lines this is your distal aspect of 2-6 like this is the mesobuccal root of 2-6 palatal root mesobuccal root palatal root once again and the distobuccal root this is the distobuccal root of 26 coming to 27 okay so you can make this out this is a uh, proximal caries which is evident proximal caries in 26 region okay 26 distal aspect and just move one more mm ahead now you can see this is the interdental region okay and uh, this is basically 28 which is palatally placed and 26 uh, sorry 27 Okay, you can also have a look a closer look at this. You can see occlusal caries is evident with 2.7 as well. Okay, so this is the palatal root of 2.7. This is the 
mesiobuccal root this one is a mesiobuccal root and you get uh, go distally and you can see this is the distobuccal root okay the roots are very long okay and this is the palatal root uh, sorry this is palatally place fused roots of 2 8 okay and it is in contact with the sinus floor same thing you can study it in the uh, dual CMPR view you can just change the uh, direction of viewing you can either change it here or you can change it in dual CMPR and do the spline marking you can study the same in uh, axial cross section so this is the axial cross section just to see how this is palately placed okay you can study the same thing in different interval lines 1 mm interval lines as well okay and see how this is palately placed now why studying different cross sections is important because it comes uh, it becomes easy to understand whether the tooth is fused or not so here in this case we can easily make out that the tooth are not fused to each other and separate from each other you can just mark these lines over here and this is one and this, this is the line of separation and you can easily make it out that teeth uh, both the teeth are separate from each other okay so basically this is palately placed 2 8 and this is buckley place 2 7 or you can say normal tooth now coming to the caries of 2 7 this is the occlusal pit caries of 2 7 okay so just to confirm you can always confirm it in the uh, volume rendering image volume rendering images are not reliable very much reliable but they can be used as a good source of patient education tool but still you can just have a good visualization of 2 7 occlusal caries which is evident over here okay this is occlusal caries and this is 2 8 that is palately placed okay you can check out the root anatomy of 2 7 also this is 2 7 buccal root anatomy this is the palatal root distobuccal root curved mesiobuccal root this will help the dentist for uh, for root canal study you can check the same like the number of canals as well whether mb2 canal is present or not so as we go axial to actually from coronal to apical region we can easily see there is no evidence of mb2 canal there might be an evidence as you can see it over here so this thing could be the mb2 canal okay so if you find suspect mb2 canal you can just mark it over here okay so this is of 27 mb2 canal okay just to confirm you can get this plus sign over here and check it once for the presence of mb2 canal since the mesial root is curved it becomes difficult so hence the endodontist has to curve the make a curvature on the file and do the biomechanical preparation okay now coming to the uh, coming back to the topic study of uh, 2 8 impacted as you can see this is the lingual roots of uh, sorry palately placed 2 7 if you just want to study uh, sorry palate uh, place 2 8 so if you just want to study 2 8 and want to get rid of the other things you can just do it by using the cutting tool so coming to how to use that cutting tool you will just uh, go to your tools and just get this green line over here close uh, in between 2 7 and 2 8 and use the cutting tool okay so now you can easily check out the grossly decayed tooth structure of 2 8 okay so how the tooth is decayed so this is your 2 8 which is grossly decayed this will help the dentist for proper planning and uh, similarly if you want to see the frontal view of 2 7 uh, 2 8 you can just get the thing you get this blue line above between 2 6 and 2 7 and just make a cut okay yeah so this is how the tooth looks like okay so they both are separate from each other there is no case of fusion or gemination it's just a separate tooth just the position of 2 8 is placed palately and little away from uh, its original position okay the root anatomy is also it appears to be fused root okay now you can check the same thing in sagittal sections also what you have to do you just have to delete this line and mark the spline markings instead of marking it this way what you'll do you'll just mark it this way from buckle to palatal so i'll just take it over here and you can just have a look at the things from mesio buccal roots disto buccal roots that is the buccal roots of 27 go internally 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 this is the palatal root of 27 
once again you can just go internally now this 2 8 has started okay grossly decayed and you can see how the roots are in contact with the sinus this will help the clinician to uh, during the extraction uh, extraction procedure okay so that the oral surgeon or the clinician can remove it with safety so this was everything about impacted uh, uh, can, uh impacted uh, 2 8 or you can say impacted third molar case which is palately placed it may give an appearance of uh, supernumerary uh, teeth or uh, supernumerary tooth present in the oral cavity but uh, what i feel it's more of uh, impacted third molar that is palately placed okay